Hello YouTubers and fellow hams, Linux enthusiasts. I've had a lot of requests for more Linux stuff. And I had something I wanted to do anyway, so I decided to go ahead and get it done. I love my ICOM 7300. All right, it's a great little rig. A lot of people call it a starter rig or a low-end rig, but for me, it's about everything I'd ever want in a radio. It's great. Um, one of the little things that I really enjoy that is really small, probably to a lot of people, maybe to others it's kind of cool, if we look at the front display, the screen of the ICOM 7300, right here in the upper right-hand corner is a clock. It's got its own real-time clock that's displayed always on the uh, front panel screen. I like that. I do paper logging still. I, uh, I've played around with Logbook of the World and QRZ and you know other online log solutions, and it's just not for me. Um, I'm not a contester. I'm not out hunting down certificates to wallpaper the wall with. I just like to get on and talk to people, so I paper log. And having that clock on the display is great. Uh, I just glance at the display, write down the time uh, for the log entry. You know, it's, it's right there all the time, 24-hour clock, perfect. What I don't like about it is it, it drifts. Come on, ICOM, as sophisticated as this radio is, couldn't you make a more accurate clock? Mine loses about a second, or gains about a second, every 8 to 10 days. And I'm a little persnickety about that. I like it to be right on. You know, I like to tune into WWV and see that time on the display change right on the beep. You know, uh, I like precision as far as the time goes. So what I have to do presently is I have to manually set the clock. And I have to do it about every week or so. And that's a process that involves tuning to WWV, waiting for the top of the hour, having the time set function open. You go into the menus, you go into the settings, clock, time set, select time, uh, punch up the hour and minute to where it needs to be, and then sit there with my finger hovered over that set button waiting for the boop on WWV so that I can hit that button and be back on time. Well, there's another way to do it. The cat programming, uh, the rig control programming, um, for the ICOM, at least on the 7300, probably the other rigs that have the clock, has a command to set the time. If we look in the manual, the full user manual, uh, back in the back area, there's a reference for all of the CAT programming commands. There's a nice little diagram of the format of the command that you send to the radio. It's all listed in hexadecimal, but there's a preamble, FE, FE, and then a command substructure and a data field where you can put data in, and then a postamble, FD, which means the end of the packet. Uh, so it looks like it's pretty easy to program and control the radio via the serial connection. Now, you need a serial connection, but hey, on this radio, that's built in. On the back of the ICOM, there's a USB port. Most of you probably know this because you already use it. When you plug that into your computer, that gives you two interfaces to the radio. One of them shows up as a sound card, and that's for transferring audio to and from the radio for doing digital modes. The other interface is a serial port, and that is for radio control, cat control, rig control, whatever you want to call it. It's for sending commands to the radio and controlling it from a computer. Now, if I look through the commands for the cat programming, we find that there is a command to set the time. Command 1A, subcommand 050095, and then the time. Now, this actually does set the real-time clock. So what I'm going to do is write a script that will synchronize the radio's clock with my computer clock. And all of my computers, when I have internet connectivity on, they synchronize their clock with the time servers on the internet, which is synchronized to the National Institute of Standards. And it's down to like a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. There's so little latency on the internet that your computer clock, if you're using network time, is right dead on with WWV, or close enough anyway. So 
there we go. We've got a time source. We have a way of talking to the radio. All I have to do is write a script. Yeah, sounds easy. Well, it took quite a while. Uh, I had a lot to figure out. I used the Python programming language, which I'm trying to learn uh, for more future projects. Uh, and I had several problems to overcome. Uh, well, a couple anyway. Uh, one was understanding the command structure. I got a little frustrated at first. Now, ICOM says that the data is in BCD, binary coded decimal. Now, that's a four bit um, binary where each character uh, in a string or a word or whatever, each character is represented individually. Four, uh, four bits, uh, 16 bytes, um, and that's for hexadecimal. So that's uh, 0 through F, 16 characters. Uh, so yeah, I had to figure that out. I, it's been a while. Um, I used to know that there was a, a relationship uh, with BCD and hexadecimal. Um, BCD digits look like decimal digits and hexadecimal. So the time, if it was 2315, uh, you would actually send it the hex byte 23 and the hex byte 15. Uh, well, after I figured that out, then the next hurdle to overcome was serial communications. Now, I've done some with Python, but in this case, I had to send specific bytes. And under the previous version of Python, Python version 2, uh, the language handled the type of data for you pretty much automatically. It was a lot easier to work with. Python 3, you have to control the type of data that you're handling in the program. And that took a lot of work. I, I, I know there's programmers that are out there going, well, that's easy. Well, yeah, I'm not a programmer, so I'm figuring it out as I go along. There was a lot of typing, a lot of debugging, a lot of try this, try that. Why doesn't this work? Why does that work? How does that work? Um, banging my head against the keyboard. It was um, a little frustrating. You know, I'm not as young as I used to be. My mind's not as agile as it used to be. But eventually I figured it out and I have a script. Let's have a look at it. So here is the script that I came up with. Right here at the top, there are three variables that we can set. The uh, baud rate that your radio is operating on, GMT offset, so if your computer is on local time and you want the radio to be on UTC, you can put in a positive or negative number here that will be the offset, the number of hours to offset the time on the radio from the computer. So if your computer is on Eastern Standard Time, negative 5, 5 hours behind GMT, you'd put positive 5 here to shift the radio 5 hours ahead to where it's on GMT. Uh, serial port is the serial device name that the ICOM is on. Now this is for Linux, slash dev, slash TTY, USB, and a number. And I know that my radio is on USB 0. So you'd, uh, you'd have to change this to indicate the serial port that your radio is on. If you're under Windows, I think you could probably just put the COM device name in here. COM3, COM4, whatever it is. And it would probably work. Uh, down here, we're defining um, the command that we're going to send to the radio. This is the command to set the time. And then this is the uh, byte that comes at the end of the command, the FD. Um, and then the script gets started. I import some libraries that I'm going to use here. Time to uh, obviously read the time, serial to talk to the radio, and struct, which is a, 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 a structure library for changing things. I'm going to be using that to convert binary and hex and stuff uh, as I send data to the radio. Okay, uh, here we get the, the local time from the computer. We separate it out into hours and minutes. And uh, I do a couple of other things in here. I check to see if uh, we're rolling over because we're going to do the GMT offset. So if we added five hours and we were at 2300, that would make it um, uh, 2700 or 2800. <laughs> so we do a, a roll over here. Um, we uh, set the clock properly if we're rolling over the time. Um, and then I, uh, I convert it to a string and I add the bytes to it to make it look like it's, well, I pad it first off. You know, if it's uh, 123, we need two digits for each. So it needs to be 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, and then I add the uh, 
hex identifier to the beginning of it, which is what the radio is going to need to see when we send the bytes to it. And then we uh, add that to our command. And then I do the same thing for minutes, pretty much. Okay, now here's the meat of the loop. I read the seconds on the current time, because we need to set the radio right at the top of the minute, you know, right at zero. So I read the seconds. And then I wait for the seconds to reach zero. And as soon as seconds reach zero, we go down here and open the serial port, and we send the command out to the radio to set the time. And then I close the port, and we're done. So it's a pretty simple script. And this is available on GitHub. The link is in the description below. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll work for you. It works great here. Here is a uh, clip of me actually setting the time with the script. And uh, I run the script. It's waiting for the top of the hour. And over on the radio, you can see that the time is wrong and WWV is coming up on the beep. And as we hear the beep, you'll see the radio's clock snap into the right time as the script sets it. So there you go. A script that will automatically update the clock on your ICOM 7300, probably adaptable to other rigs just by changing the command structure. It's fully open source. It's up there on GitHub. There's a link to the GitHub in the video description below, along with a second link, a raw link for downloading the Python script directly. Uh, you just mark it as executable if you're on Linux. Right click on it, select properties on your desktop environment and there should be under permissions a checkbox to make it executable. On the Raspberry Pi it's a drop-down menu. Uh, from the terminal you can type chmod space plus x space and the name of the file to make it executable. And then that should be it. You can just run it by typing it in um, or you can run it with Python directly by typing Python 3 space and the name of the script. My favorite method is to make it a cron job where it's going to automatically run for me every hour. So if I've got the computer on and the radio on um, for more than an hour, the time is going to be set for me. It's going to be synchronized. So very handy. Hope you enjoy that and I uh, hope it uh, is useful to some of you out there. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.